Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be painting one of my favorite subjects, flowers. <laughs> this is actually a photo from my flower garden. It's been kind of photoshopped to make it to look a little fuller, but <laughs> those are all from my garden this year. Really excited. It was uh, <laughs> very proud of myself. <laughs> got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat tonight. So if you've got questions while we're painting, you can ask those in chat and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'll be using a 8 by 16 inch canvas today. This is the Frederick's uh, Pro Series canvas. Um, haven't done anything to it except for just a light, very light coat of burnt umber on here. I just put in maybe about that much in the center and use a paper towel just kind of wipe it around. It's very blotchy, but it just gives us kind of a ground um, color to work with. It'll make it a little bit easier for our um, when we put our flowers on to see the values and things. If we've got a little bit of a base color on there, I get a lot of questions about why I do that, and it just kind of helps give it a kickstart having a coat of paint on there. Um, as far as brushes go, I think I'm going to use my Aspen brushes tonight. This is the um, Aspen from Princeton. They're kind of a faux hog bristle. They've got a little bit of an extra like uh, texture to them, a little bit stiffer than the ones I normally use. And this will give me some good textural, juicy brush strokes. When we do our flowers, we're going to do it impressionist style. So we're going to have lots of paint going down. Um, and so I just grabbed like different filbert sizes. The filberts are kind of the rounded tips. And I've got a couple angles that make really nice leaves and things. And then some rounds and some smaller ones. And I don't know if I'm going to use all of these, but um, um, when I use them, I'll make sure to mention the exact sizes and things. Um, as far as colors go, let's go, let's go over that. Put out a lot of colors. Whoops, let's move that back a little bit so you can see them. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go with uh, carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt orange, quinacridone, magenta. Uh, this is light magenta, I think. Let me see. Yes, light magenta. Uh, cadmium red light. Or, I'm sorry, cadmium red medium, cadmium red light, cadmium orange, uh, yellow, Indian yellow hue, uh, cadmium yellow light, thalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, and these are a couple of premixed colors that I pulled out just at the last minute. This is um, light ultramarine blue and titan violet pale. Um, it's just a very, very, very pale pink um, give me a little bit of an extra pink tone to some of the lighter highlights on the flowers. If you don't have all these colors, just use what you've got that's similar. I'm just grabbing some pre-mixed colors for this since we've got so much going on. It'll give us a little head start um, for these live streams. Um, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and the gloss glazing liquid uh, or matte medium or something like that just in case we need to thin down our paint. All right. I'm that over just a little bit there we go all right very good so I'm going to start with the 12 bright and I'm just going to kind of base in the fence area I'm not going to really paint a fence on this one I'm just going to kind of put in a very light like gestural fence <laughs> it'll just be kind of some um, lines we've actually done two other uh, impressionist um, can on this size canvas impressionist flower uh, lessons on the size canvas. Uh, so I'm going to go with those kind of styles. So it's going to be kind of in the same, um, could be like part of that series. I don't have them in front of me, so I'm not exactly sure. It's been a couple of years since I've painted them, but, mm -hmm. um, if you're looking for those, I think they're called impressionist, uh, flower garden with poppies and one with peonies. So there's, there's two of them in there. So I'm going to use Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue. That's kind of my favorite go-to gray mixture. And then I've added just a little bit of Burnt or uh, Unbleached Titanium to it. Um, and you can see it's really not mixed totally on my brush. I should be able to see all three colors. And that's kind of what I want. And I'm going to just use that to kind of quickly. And I'm not really wanting like necessarily wood slats. So I don't have to worry about leaving texture. I'm going to press down and... Just get, I just want kind of streaks. So if you're not seeing streaks, just get a little bit more paint on your brush and don't mix it as much. 
So a couple, couple times, you know, pick up a little paint, brush it in a couple times just to press it down into the brush and then go straight to the canvas. Getting a little bit of water here to help. You can spray your canvas down again. You can spray your canvas at any point um, while you're painting as long as your background color is dry um, to help the paint go on a little smoother. Um, I might do it on this side and just see if it helps me a little bit. <clears throat> what you don't want to do is water down your paint too much because acrylic, especially heavy body acrylics that I'm using, they uh, will, they don't, they don't have a ton of binder like craft acrylics do, like craft acrylic, you know, in the little tubes or little bottles. They have um, a lot of binder, not as much pigment, and so you can add just about as much water as you want to with them. They're not going to, um, you can do techniques like floating and different things where you are actually using water um, to uh, do a dark, you know, dark uh, shadowing and things. And you're basically um, thinning down that paint so much that it's transparent on one side. And uh, anyhow, with heavy body acrylics, you can't do that because they um, they don't have as much binder. They have more pigment, and so once you add too much water, it just kind of, they don't stick to the canvas really well. It's fine for like one layer, but if you're doing multiple layers um, or just for archival reasons, you probably don't want to do that. Um, if you're doing more than, more than one layer, though, on here, which we obviously are. I'm going to get a little bit more sienna here to have that. Um, it will start lifting when we put our subsequent layers on that thin, thinned out paint layer underneath will, won't be stuck to the canvas well and it'll, it can lift. So that's pretty much what I'm going for. It looks vaguely like a fence if you squint your eyes real hard. <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of the look we're going for. And I'm definitely going to need more burnt upper here. Or just if I take my glasses off, that's pretty much what it looks like. Just <laughs> <laughs> Mark built the garden beds for us this year because I kept encroaching on the gar the vegetable garden with my flowers. So he built me a whole section along the back fence of just just so I could plant all these flowers. Mm -hmm. And I had about twelve varieties of poppies, and only about five of them came up. <laughs> And somehow we still wound up with flowers in the vegetable garden. What? Well, you have to have the flowers in there to attract the pollinators, too. So you got to have some flowers in your, even in, but not, you know, not the star, just the marigolds. Oh, just. I see. No, no, the other one that self-planted and took over the pepper bed. Oh, that one is, that one, I, I, I put it in there. It didn't self-plant. I put it in there because it broke off, and I put it in there. Yeah. I see. It, bro it was in a hanging basket. Uh, it was, oh, I can't think of the name of it now. Start with P. Getting a little bit more ultramarine blue, or um, burnt umber. I'm going to get some ultramarine blue, too, because I'm much used it all up here and I'm probably going to need you to wa to wash or uh, dry this for me hun. Oh really? Yes. Alright. Let's see what I can do. Thanks. I'm going to go a little bit darker down here. At the bottom where the Dirt is. Are you ready? Okay. just a little bit and just kind of flicking up with my brush to get it to blend in a little bit there all right that'll So 
So yeah, I had a little, uh, I've, I planted, um, larkspur and delphinium both this year, but my delphinium didn't come up. The larkspur came up. Um, I had planted the delphinium in trays and, um, they, uh, I had a couple plants that I transplanted into the garden, but they didn't really do anything. And then the larkspur, I just, um, which are the tall, spiky, purpley ones. I had a purple, um, kind of a blue color that's, I don't know that I got a picture of any of the blue ones. And then um, white and light pink were in the mixture that I had. And I just sprinkled it all along where I had planted the poppies. And um, like I said, the poppies kind of came up. Um, they actually just stopped blooming. Normally they're a spring flower. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that they'll come back next year. I don't know if any of them um, self-seeded themselves, so I'm going to try to plant them a little bit earlier this year. I've got hollyhocks blooming right now, though. Hollyhocks and zinnias. Um, let me see if I can show you that video real quick. Um, or at least just the... Yeah, let me see if I can... Nope, I don't have it. Oh, it's not on a good... Format. I did it for TikTok. Um, let me show you though too what I plan. This is another photo that I took from our garden. We have these colorful echinacea and there's some of the blue um, larkspur um, from the photo that I took and Mark took a photo of the cardinal there and the butterflies. So these are all the photos that we took and I kind of mashed them all together uh, and did this for a $5 bonus video for our patrons this uh, this last month. So it's the start of a new month in August. We're going to be doing another bonus video this month. We're going to be doing a beach scene, ocean, um, like sand dunes with a pelican. And um, this one is available, though, to watch um, also with your membership if you're interested in that. There's information down in the description. I always like to show those because these are like longer ones that I don't do on YouTube anymore because they're just the longer version videos just don't do that well on YouTube. And so I do them for patrons now and uh, we do shorter videos for our YouTube ones. Um, yeah, there you go. There's the link to patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. I've also got a $10, $10 level that gets a, um, we're working on, here, let me show it real quick while I'm talking about it. We're working on animals of South America right now. Uh, we did animals of Asia a couple months ago, and then we did another project in between. But um, basically, we work on one painting all month long. Sometimes it takes two months. This one started last month, and we're going to finish it this month. So um, really fun. And that's the ten dollar level. Those those, like I said, get the full like their own Facebook group, and they get a video. Just their just all their own every Thursday, most every Thursday. Um, when we work on those challenge videos, and those are about eight to ten hours usually um, in length when we finish. Sometimes longer. All right. The other benefit of the ten dollar group is that I'm not there to talk. Right. You pay for Mark you. not to be. <laughs> not to be in the video <laughs> okay go ahead I'll stop talking <laughs> all right so I think I'm gonna pare down what I've got here going on in this photo maybe um maybe make a few things bigger and just like focus on um a few a few of the main flowers there are also some bees in there that I didn't you can't really see them very well so I'm gonna Try to get the bees in. I'm hoping that this lighter background might help with that. But I think I'm going to go and start with this big pink poppy that's right up in this corner here. Um, I the the photograph is cut off there from what I'm seeing. There's a few more, and then I really like the little seed pods, the way they look, the bent over little seed pods here. So I want to get some of those in. I might spread them out a little bit more. And I'm just using school chalk here to draw these in. Delphinium, or not Delphinium, Larkspur, we talked about that. Delphinium had, they, the ones that I planted, they had leaves that were more rounded shape, um, kind of like a geranium leaf almost. And then these ones, the Larkspur, have like a really lacy leaf. They're kind of fern-like leaves, really pretty. So I think I might cluster my pink poppies like one two 
and then maybe do a third one over here the one that's open there like that and then do more of the larkspur over here and then I had these little California poppies that were really cute little yellow, little orangish ones that grew with a, like a sage green um, sage green leaves they're very low to the ground so I'll probably pepper those in at the bottom here all along different places and then do some of the red poppies I do have some white ones in here too so maybe I'll do a white one um, let's see let's do a white one up in here I'm moving these around obviously so we're just trying to fit in as much as we can without going too small. I feel like if I go too small, we kind of lose the detail. So I'm going to do these three. I really like the three, three poppies that were clustered in together right here. And delphinium there. Maybe a couple more red ones over here. I want to also look at this shape here that I'm creating to make sure I've got something interesting going on that they're not just all lined up one, two, three. Um, look at them this way, up and down, so I don't want anything lined up here, 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 and I don't want anything lined up here, 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 you know. So I want to make sure that I'm moving things around both ways um, so that I've got kind of an interesting composition there. I think that looks pretty good though. I'm gonna go ahead and just jump in here and start painting some flowers. And these go pretty fast. Um, these kind of flowers, they don't take too much detail. I think less is more when you're trying to kind of do these gestural type flowers. You want to kind of squint your eyes a little bit just to kind of get the overall shape of the flower and the petals. Um, and that kind of helps me. So I'm going to start with my greenery though. I'm going to get my light uh, phthalo green, add some white. Not, it wasn't light phthalo green. I grabbed phthalo green, yellow shade, add some white to make it light. And I'm going to get some Indian yellow hue that'll kind of give it a kind of a, maybe a little bit of Cadmium yellow light there, there we go. A nice bright green. And then I'm gonna get some more of that and add some phthalo blue to it. And a little bit of burnt sienna. That'll kind of make a more neutral green, darker green. And I'm gonna kind of start with that as my base and sort of just put in some leafy leafy bits kind of using the edge of the brush here and just kind of doing some lines the larger leaves that you're seeing in there are from the hollyhocks that grew up later so but there's a lot of small little little leaves. I'm going to get a little bit of the blue and green here. Get some unbleached titanium so that it kind of tones it down to more of a sage. The unbleached titanium has just a slight yellow tone. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown in it so it'll keep the turquoise color from being like a bright aqua. It turns it to this kind of more neutral, natural looking color. I'm just going to use the, this is the four fill part that I grabbed. Sorry, I didn't mention that. And I'm just going to use the tip of it to scrub around where I want those California poppies to go. Kind of there and down in here too. They have those kind of ferny, leafy life leaves too. All the Poppies and the larkspur both had kind of very delicate looking leaves. I'm just trying to get the essence of them. We don't need any like individual leaf type things for these, those ones at least. And then I'm going to kind of mix together a little bit of this darker 
a little bit of this color, a little bit of this brighter greenish one. And let me press that brush flat so I can get a thin line on it. And I'm going to go to where my poppies are. So try to kind of get my lines to my poppies out. Kind of keep it thin if I can. Hey, uh, real quick. Uh -huh. Which brush is that? The four filbert. Four filberts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and do it where I'm going to do that. The larkspur too. Oops, says we're going to be the, the little bent over ones. The butts. Okay. Okay. And then I can just kind of press some little leaves around the around the stems on either side. And I'm really not, not um, wanting to go too fussy with this. So I'm trying to keep it very loose and and yeah, just kind of get the essence of the flowers and the leaves in there. Look at the shapes I'm creating, see if I've got good dark and light areas and go back in with the dark now and kind of put back in some darker areas around some of these. It's looking pretty good. I, when I get done with this, I kind of want it mostly this bottom half kind of mostly covered with some sort of greenery of some sort. And I'm going to get some lighter now and go back in here and do some little lighter areas. And each green area, you probably want at least two to three values. So this one, I may go back in. I didn't do like a darker green. So if it, it I might not need it on this one though. But because um, I've got that darker green from the other color, I may not need this one to be dark too. But um, at least these two values of this color, of this lighter sage green that had the turquoise leaning, will be good. And it just gives us a little bit of depth. Looks good. start kind of putting in some of these flowers so we kind of have an idea of where to put the rest of them. I'm going to go ahead and get the, just go straight in with the cadmium red medium and put in this big poppy that's right here. It's a circle in the picture but I kind of want to open up the petals a little bit and give them a little bit more interest so I'm kind of leaving a little bit of of, an, of a shape to them kind of exaggerating the shapes that I'm seeing so something like that And then this last little one, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And I also want to think about scale too, because I want to have different sized flowers going on in here. Don't want them all to be really big or all to be the same size, you know. And that looks pretty good. I might go ahead and just leave that. And let's go ahead and get some of the 
light pink and the magenta, the light magenta and regular magenta. And I'm going to add some white to it. Put an acrodome magenta here. I'm going to go a little bit dark to start with on these pink poppies and then we'll add the white to them later. I might go a little bit bigger. Again, thinking about scale, I think I want these ones to be kind of the focal point flowers. So I'll make them a little bit bigger. Kind of give them a little bit more weight. Um, and then I put the other one down here. This is right on the third here, so that'll really attend direct attention right here. Having it right here. And again, just kind of looking at my picture and seeing what my overall shape is for my flower. This is the same flower photographed in three different places. <laughs> mm -hmm. And photoshopped, if you're wondering. <laughs> uh, like, that looks like the same flower. Yeah, it is. It is the same flower. <laughs> just from different angles. <laughs> Didn't get that many of these, unfortunately. And the poppies only lived for like sometimes, sometimes two days if I was lucky. Yeah. And most of them died yeah. within a day, and the other ones pop up. Mm -hmm. So it's quite interesting. That's the first time I've grown poppies. I was very proud of my, ridiculously proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been pretty successful. Did this. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But. Uh, yeah, it's like magic. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, yeah, it's been awesome. They did I mean, really well. Yeah, the, you know, they came Same in thing with Larkspur. ahead of the other ones, and when mm -hmm. they've died off, the Larkspurs come in. And yeah, yeah, and the hollyhocks now blooming. Mm -hmm. I was trying to see if I had a video of it, but I didn't. I didn't get a good. I I did it in long version for TikTok, so I don't oh, have a good vi video of the. The bees. Garden and the bees, yeah. The bees are going crazy for the hollyhocks. I'm definitely going to be painting some hollyhocks. And There's the picture there. Yeah, yeah. Literally a bee in every every single one. <laughs> sometimes two. Yeah, sometimes two, exactly. They were queuing up. You did have one outside waiting yeah. to get in and one in the middle. Oh, I did one, a bed and breakfast video. Huh? You, you remember I did some videos because they were sleeping. They were bed oh, down that's the right. Night. Yeah. Airbnb, yeah. you said. Oh, yeah, that's right. Airbnb. <laughs> that's right. B&B. Okay, so there we go. Those are going to be our main puppies there. And... Play the video? Okay. And they were all curled up sleeping. They were holding the middle part of the flower and just sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> It's good. We're sleeping here tonight. This is a nice little place to sleep. <laughs> so cute. So cute. Okay, I don't know how this one got shaped that way, but there we go. All right, so now I probably need to go a little bit darker even. Still in the middle here. But I just need to let that layer dry. Um, if you put too much layer, too much paint down too quickly, the acrylics you can't do all three layers in one go. <laughs> just won't work. And they won't stick. So I have to let the these under layers dry. So putting this on, putting these, you know, the greenery on, and then just let it dry. Work on something else. Come back to it. Because if you try to do all three layers of depth L at once, it just won't. It won't work. All right, so let's do this, these seed pods. I'm just gonna kinda use the corner of the brush and set it down there. Oops, 
a little bit big. It spit out at me. And then this one is right, right here. And adding a highlight to them. There we go. Cool. Maybe doing a couple more up here. I always like to do things in fives, so mm -hmm. just looks better. I'll do another one down here. might tuck a couple more in later. We'll see how it goes with the rest of these. Let me get some of this light green here. And I'm going to add some more white to it. This is the one that had the yellow in it. And I'm going to use that. And I think I need a little bit smaller brush. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that out and grab my two filbert, which is just a little bit lot more narrow. There's the four, there's the two. About half the size and width. Adding a little bit of water. This got kind of dry there. And I'm going to start putting in some of the Larkspur. So they have these little buds at the top. And then like little they kind of grow along a stem. Pretty small. Like that. It's a good color for them. This is just the green buds that kind of grow along the become the flowers so um, I'm gonna put some puppies on top of these so that's they're they're not um, put this kind of in between there Just something like that let's go ahead and do some over here that in to kind of fill in that space. Maybe do that one coming out like that. Something like that. Okay. Let's do another one over here that's curving in. Really, as they come down, they kind of face down, not up as much anymore. Okay, that looks pretty good. Pretty good. I'm going to get some more of this and do the little fuzzies that are kind of at the bottom of these. They kind of have these little lacy leaves that kind of fill out the bottom. So I'm just going to do each flower with its own kind of signature color. And even if it's not exactly this color in the photograph, I just kind of feel like it helps the color story overall to identify, okay, the poppy is this kind of mid-range green, and then the larkspur have this lighter yellowish tone, and then the these poppies down here are going to have the, the more blue-green color. Okay. 
Looks good. Um, let's get some of the brighter green, a little bit of the burnt umber green. So, and then maybe a little bit of the yellow. Burnt umber, thala green, a little tiny touch of thala blue, and some yellow. So it's kind of a darker version of this, but toned down a little bit. I'm just going to add some of that in with this just to have kind of have some darker areas otherwise everything's going to look a little too light okay go in here and darken up kind of where it attaches to the stem a little bit here and there I'm going to do lots of flowers on top of this, so we're just kind of laying the groundwork. I'm not too worried about how this is looking as far as the, you know, perf I'm not trying to be super perfect about the brush strokes or anything. Just trying to get some layering of color just a little bit. And then I want to get some really dark green, so get some burnt umber and that dark green. Just go really dark down in here in some places, kind of where the darkest color would be. Down low where the shadows are around my flowers. Maybe. Looking kind of like a hot mess right now, but we'll get it there. It always kind of looks a little funky when we first start. These first layers, they just, you kind of have to build up the layers to get it to start to look like anything. Sometimes those first layers just don't really, can't really tell what's going on yet. That's where we're at right now. Okay, so I'm going to get some white. Add it to this turquoisey green color that we use for these flower pods, and I'm just gonna kind of tap in some texture on them. They kind of they're fuzzy, so and my light was kind of coming from overhead mostly, so there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of shadows going on on in these photos, but um, we can kind of manufacture them a little bit if we want a little bit more drama going on. So I might take a little bit of this dark green, add a little bit of my phthalo blue to it to make it more turquoisey and kind of just maybe say our light's coming from this direction. So this is our light side and this would be our dark side and just kind of add a little dark, maybe underneath a little bit more color there. Not wanting to stick. There we go. It's a little bit more color underneath. Give them a little bit more th three dimensional shape there. A little form. There we go. Okie doke. Looking good. All right, um, I think I'm gonna to use this brush. This is the Short Angle Bright. If you don't have this one, you can use your regular, I would probably grab my 3 8 inch angle from that one. It's pretty similar size. This one's got a little bit longer bristles. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to try this one and see if I like it for the Larkspur blossoms. Um, actually, before I do that, I think I'm going to put in my... Uh, do I want to do that yet? No, I don't. I'm going to wait. Okay. I'm trying to layer these flowers on kind of in their 
darkest to lightest, or, you know, front to back, back to front, I mean, back to front. All right, so mixing the quinacridone, or the um, doxazine purple with the ultramarine blue 50-50 here, and I am going to add just a tiny touch of the quinacridone magenta, too, to make it a little bit more of a violet um, purple. There we go. That's pretty close to my delphinium or larkspur colors, I mean. Yeah, so um, the delphiniums, I, I thought that they were interchangeable. I thought the delphiniums and larkspur were the, basically the same flower, just called different things maybe, but I think they're closely related, but they actually aren't the same flowers. <laughs> so I was been calling, kind of using them interspersed in her interchangeably. I really don't know the total difference. I know that the, the ones that came up that were delphinium definitely did have a different leaf, though. Didn't have this lacy leaf that these ones had, so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it like that, I think. I'm trying to think if I want this in front or behind, but I think I want it in front, so. I'm going to go ahead and kind of put these on sort of in and around behind that and they they're like a um let's see it looks like five petaled flowers so one two three four five but you're not always seeing all five you know because of the angles so sometimes you're just seeing a couple of them from the side or something you know so i'm not gonna be too fussy about this shape it's, but they do kind of have a star shape, kind of like that. So I'm going to do purple here. I think I'm going to do the white over here with more of the red poppies. Red and pink, so I'll do the purple here too. Either here or here, maybe I do. Yeah, I'll do them here. So, one, two, three. Four, five. Some of these are kind of being seen. I think I want. I think I want my. I think I'm gonna even use this one. It's my three eighths inch angle. The velvet touch can hold a little bit more more paint. kind of setting it down flat and letting the shape of the brush create the petals so kind of turning it upside down and pulling toward the middle of the flower and kind of turning it in the direction of the center of the flower each time doing hun I am doing fantastic good <coughs> how you doing good paint flowers <laughs> I'm in my happy pace right now. I should have known I know uh, I'm gonna get some magenta and some white and a little bit of this purple Got kind of a little bit of a purpley pink tone. And we'll do these over here away from the pink.
So the pink in these poppies was a little bit more coral based, and these ones are a little bit more of a purpley undertone to the pink. So just to kind of give it a little different, different tape, different color there. Okay. Obviously these aren't in my photo, so I'm making them up. I'm going to kind of do this one as sort of buds, so it hasn't maybe opened up all the way yet. And it gets more of the white. And let's do this last one with a little bit of blue. So we'll do kind of a light blue color. They come in all kinds of pretty colors. Maybe a little bit more ultramarine blue. Give it a little bit more darker blue. There we go. Don't like to start out too light because then I have no place to go with my highlights. Okay, that looks good. And then let's go ahead and put some of this light blue. blue and a little bit of the purple. This uh, light ultramarine blue. It's just white plus ultramarine blue. That's all it is. And get some white here, which is very similar to this color that we're using before. <coughs> I want to go for kind of a medium pink purple color here. And we'll use that. I'm going to get a little bit more of the magenta in here too. Use that on these ones here do our highlights. I'm mostly covering up most of this this color and just leaving a little bit of the darkest purple here and there. Close to the background darkness. Let me get this Titan Violet here. leave this one a little bit darker just to have you know three different or just a little bit different value there over here getting a little bit of the purple and the ultramarine blue I'm gonna add a little bit of highlights to these but not as light as these ones over here and just add a little bit of a darker blue to some of these. A little bit of ultramarine blue. Okay. here 
and I add the little white centers of these. I'm just using the fluid paint because it goes on a little bit easier to do dots. So. that brush and just touch and tap in to get the centers in there. That looks good. Let's go ahead and do some there. Alright, and then for the pink ones, we'll go ahead and do this too. show up very well. Yeah, it's doing all right. Let's let those dry. They got a lot of paint on them right now. They need to dry before we mess with them anymore. So I'll put in my white puppies while we're letting those dry. I'll just try to scoop up the last of my heavy body white here. And put it in right here. this white and some of these and add a little bit white highlight over there and I'm wondering if I want to add some right here too I feel like I might need some I'm going to wait though, because sometimes we add too much too soon. I don't want it to take away from the overall look. All right, so I'm going to add the, the like more reddish, orangey poppies over here, the kind of medium size poppy right here, and one right up here I've got the cadmium red light and the cadmium orange or cadmium red medium and cadmium red light going on. I'm going to fill in some of these gaps with just a little bit of leaves. Leaves. Leafy. And make sure that this one has a them go into it, these two. Okay. I'm 
And then let's start on our little California poppies. So those have a lot of yellow, yellow gold, orangey color. So I'm gonna get some of this cadmium yellow light and a little bit of white. orange and I'm gonna start putting these in down in here the white will just help them stick going a little bit more yellow on them at first and then I'll add the the orangey tones, but they've got a lot of yellow in the middle and then their base color. I'm ending up with a line here of them, so I need to either make one of these higher or lower. Um, try to move this one up a little bit. There we go. And then I'm not going to put as many over here, just a couple. So I'm going to get the light magenta and my orange cadmium red light. I'm going to mix up a corally orange color here. And I'm going to work that into the yellow. If I can catch it while it's wet, it'll blend a little bit. Create a little softer look. I want to be sure to leave that leave that yellow in the middle though. Some of these are kind of left a little bit yellow, too. Get a little bit more of the yellow there and do a little bit softer, softer orange for them. setting my brush down and kind of pulling it towards the center to get it to kind of streak and leave 
a little bit of color. This yellow is mostly dry on this side. So this is just going on on top. It's not really blending at all. A little bit more yellow. Goodness, this person's not cooperating. Okay. And they have five, uh, four, uh, looks like four or five petals, one, two, one, two, three, four, looks like one, two, I, th I can't tell, some of them look like they, I think that they might have five petals, but two of them kind of look the same, I'm not really sure, so I can't really tell from the picture, uh, several of them look like it has four petals, but one of the petals is large, so I kind of think there's five, and they're just sticking together. Do what feels right to you. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think it matters. Adding a little bit more brighter yellow in the centers of some of those. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of these. <clears throat> I might put some large burn in front. All right, uh, I'm gonna get some magenta and white. And my cadmium red light. Go away. I want to make a light, light red. Go away, fly. Four what? Four petals. Four petals. Okay. Is it what you're painting there? Uh huh. Yep. Or something similar. California poppies are called, I think. So, get a little bit of the cadmium red light and some white here. I've got some with magenta and some with white here. And I'm going to put my highlights on my red petals. And I think I want, let me do this brush. I'm going to do a smaller short, try the short filbert number four here. I feel like I need a little bit more control. That one's just, I was kind of feeling a little out of control when I was doing those. All right, so just kind of brushing on some color there and then getting my red. And I'm going to add some quinacridone burnt orange to it for the dark center of the red and pull back, back up through the light pink. So I want the centers a little bit darker. Just blend that out a little bit. There we go. get a little bit of purple with my burnt umber or actually black makes a good color so that black with my cadmium red just not too much of it and then the magenta helps kind of make it a little bit warmer a little bit brighter or cooler I should say I guess and let's go ahead and kind of start where the centers are going to be 
darken that our area around the center up a little bit. All these. I'll go ahead and do these too. Because they're not exactly the same red, but they're close. Okay, so that'll be sort of my center color. some of these a little bit more yellow so they're not all the same same I don't, I don't, I don't like the way they're looking right now right so a little bit more of that just solid red I'm gonna go ahead and put that on first and then put my pink highlights on it'll give it a little something to blend into all right then grab my pink highlight color and they're not really pink um, flowers, so I don't want them to look pink, but you kind of need a, you know, a light color. Red is a little tricky to highlight because it does turn pink real quick, so you kind of have to add a lot of yellow to your red to get it to not look like a pink flower if you don't want it to, to turn that color. So there, I'm just going to highlight just a few of the parts that are sticking out and leave the rest of it pretty dark. Red there. They what? don't have your uh, dressing. They don't have my dressing? Oh, okay. I'll just use one from home. He can get whatever, he, the salsa one that he likes then. Spencer's ordering Chick-fil-A for us for dinner. They don't have my salad dressing. <laughs> Sorry. Live stream. <laughs> live stream with Hashtag some real people. life. Hashtag live stream. <laughs> Hashtag dinner. <laughs> They're hungry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mixed in black with my purple there. I'm going to just add that on the centers of my flowers. I like adding a little bit of purple to these, to black uh, for these. Just kind of adds a little bit more, I don't know, just a prettier tone. Okay, and I think that's going to be good. I'll add some highlights later, but let that set. Let's go ahead and work on these guys. So these guys will be kind of more this orangey color that we mixed for these. Uh, might make some. these are more that we had we did I did have a coral poppy that was really really pretty I think it was called silk chiffon apricot chiffon that's what it was apricot chiffon really pretty pretty color so these ones will be that kind of more orangey toned. Get a little bit more of the cadmium red medium. And the front petals here are kind of crossing over. Um, there's a little coming from below, from this way, and then it's of coming down so we're seeing just a hint of the center of the flower like that we kind of pull down so let's do this one so this is the this is the front petal and then if you pull it down you can kind of create that <coughs> shape and then it should darken up as it goes down into the around the bottom of the flower so down here should be a little bit darker Going up into that highlight. And then it'll look like it's curving down. There we go. Makes sense. Um, I think 
flowers, as long as you remember where your flat petal, petals are all attached at the center, then they're really not, not that hard to kind of make them up. Um, they can kind of overlap however you want them to, as long as you kind of have them all attached right here in the middle. They start looking funky when people are creating petals that are floating out, you know, and not attached to anything. They kind of aren't. You know, that go in the wrong direction where no, no part of it is actually going down into the center of the flower. Or, I don't know if that, I'm making sense there, but I'd need an example to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, moving on. go. We got this kind of really pretty coral coral with and the bright red. I think I want more of the bright red ones. I feel like there's kind of a I don't know. I do this. I need to watch myself because I tend to fill up once I start seeing empty spaces in my flowers, I tend to fill it up. And oh, uh, that comment was made about 30 minutes ago. Oh, really? Yeah, cover all the green. <laughs> Cover all the green with flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody somebody said that? Of course. They know you. <laughs> what? I never do that. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, so I need to I need to watch myself because I really want to put another flower right there. But I, I think we may not need it. I kind of just wish that I'd nudged this one a little higher is what would have been better. Because what I'm not liking is that these three are all the same height here. I feel like if I had just moved that one up just to about right here, it would have been, it would have fixed it. So that's just a compositional error. And I, the only thing I can do is either, I could make this one bigger, which I might just do. I might try to fix it that way. Just make it bigger and, 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 put some green down here um, let me do that Let's see if I can fix it that way Yeah, we'll just make it a little bit bigger. That'll be fine. It's good. And it actually looks better to have one a little bit bigger anyways, I think. So this one will just be a little bit bigger. Fill it in. It'll give it a little bit more weight in this space. And fill in this empty spot up right here and keep it from looking like one, two, three that are all the same size right next to each other. So let's work on these pink chiffon ones here. And I'm going to use this violet color for them. And their highlights really are pretty much just white. So I'm going to use this purpley toned white for this. And if you don't have this color, just add a little bit of a little bit of this delphinium or, or magenta with a little bit of purple or something to your white. It's just got a little bit of slight, it's not really purple necessarily, it's just, it's, violet oxide is kind of a really dark, um, let's see if I have it, I don't know if I have it out. It's almost like quinacridone magenta, or I'm not quinacridone magenta, um, almost like doxazine purple in intensity, um, darkness. Uh, 
There it is. Oh, no, that's permanent maroon. Oh, well. Never mind. What? Oh, thank you. I did that the other day, too. <laughs> got, got my belly in the shot. Sorry about that. You don't want to watch my lap while I'm painting? Okay. What? <laughs> this wasn't my face, because... I am having a bad hair day. <laughs> okay. That looks good. Ooh. Picked up the whole thing there. You need to lock down that so it doesn't do that. I don't know how to do that. I did that during my challenge video last week, too. Mm -hmm. It was in my lap. <laughs> I don't know how long it had stayed that way. I just noticed it. <laughs> Hopefully not too long. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use some of this in this white one, too. And then I'm going to get a little bit of the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Mix that to a gray. Use a little bit of that with my white to mark out that white one a little bit. more of that. Oh, that's still wet. Okay, never mind. I was gonna do that one, but I can't. I'm gonna get some cadmium red light and cadmium red medium here, and I'm just gonna darken up the shadow areas on this one. These ones. And then let's use a little bit more white the cadmium red light, cadmium red medium colors, and just use that on these. Orangey ones. Okay, then getting my cadmium yellow. Pushing that color around a little bit. I find flowers that have a lot of yellow in them to be a little bit trickier because you're starting with a really low um, 
or high value color. It's it's a high, really light color. And so you don't have anywhere to go for your highlights. So all you can do is go a little bit darker, you know, and you don't want to go too dark because they usually aren't that dark either. Um, so it kind of makes it a little bit trickier to get your values looking right, you know, to get that full range of values that you want. So I ended up either, um, most of the time I'll just end up going a little bit darker with the, with the, um, values uh, on my darker colors with the yellow you know so in this case we can go a little bit darker with our reds maybe use the little bit of the cadmium red light in full strength just in a couple places not to overwhelm it but just to kind of add a little more, more values shift from my yellow you know so that it's not all really really light all over and we can use some of the Indian yellow hue too with our cadmium yellow light because it's got more of that golden tone so that'll give us a good like secondary color to use in our yellow versions of the flowers. It is transparent though, so you have to add a little bit of white to it if you want it to be opaque and cover over anything. Get a little bit more of the red here. Just kind of playing with these until I kind of get the layers looking the way I want them to. more of the light magenta and oil and, and uh, regular magenta and I'm going to add it to this purpley toned color here so I've got that that's this color and I'm going to put in my darker petals either the petals that are Kind of facing up. I might just open these up a little bit. I feel like I don't like them all being closed up. So I think I'm just going to move this petal down a little bit and open up that center. Get that white light color. the center and then we'll just have this one petal kind of going in front but not covering it totally so the center is slightly open right there okay and this one we will do the bent in front. Go nice and dark right here where it kind of goes down in to the center just with magenta there. Pull it up. This one's got a petal that's going to halfway open there. And the petals like this facing, you know, if it's facing full flat, if it's turned on its side or it's facing us, it changes its shape to a more of a line. So these ones that we're painting here are kind of more facing straight at us. So they look more like a line than a 
we don't fully open petal. Those can be a little bit tricky to get, but sometimes just doing a line like that is all you need to do. This one too, kind of just doing a line across here where it's facing us. center. Alright. Almost there. We've just got a few finishing touches to do. So for these ones, I want some I'm gonna clean off this so I have room to work here. This is a glass palette, so this is just a glass scraper tool. That's all like you would use to get gunk off your glass windows. Satisfying. Really. <laughs> Comes off a lot easier when it's still a little bit wet, but it sticks to everything. <laughs> Makes a mess of my knife. <laughs> so I usually wait for it to dry <laughs> if I can. from the, the paint that brown on the canvas there. Okay. All right. Still with me? Almost done. Definitely going to do splatters today. together I need to work on that one still and I need to do the centers of all these flowers so getting some more white and some more yellow I'm kind of out of my green too I might put out some more green because I think I'm gonna do a few last leaves put out a little bit of the green I think everything else is still workable gonna eat his dinner. here with the light blue. I feel like it needs a little bit of light blue right there. So I think that color was had some yellow in it. And a little bit of burnt sienna maybe. And white. Okay, close enough. I'm going to keep it kind of low. Just do it right here. Just do a few, it doesn't have to be a lot, just, just to kind of tie in this color that's over here on the 
outside in the middle a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Also kind of gives something behind this there too. I feel like it was kind of a little too boom, 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 you know, a little too perfect right there with all three of them kind of facing in the same direction, same shape, same size. Too much sameness. I think I'm just going to take that one out totally. There we go. Okay. Get a little bit of the darker ultramarine blue here. And it's looking a little bit uh, a bit flat. I'm gonna make a dark a little bit too much of the same value. So yeah, just kind of if I took a picture of that and did black and white, it'd just be all the same color here. So I'm just gonna add some darker darker bits in there. Break that up. Let's go ahead and use that. This is just ultramarine or, or um, burnt umber, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, phthalo green. Kind of like a phthalo turquoise plus, plus some darker. And I'm just going to use this in a few places to add some dark leaves. You'll see pretty quick how nicely this works to add some areas of darkness back in. We've got a lot of light colors happening. We need, need some dark back in there in some places. All right. all go in the same direction. They're all kind of going this direction. I want to make sure some of them are kind of going the other the other way too. Okay, get some of that lighter green. Kind of go back on top of some of these. Kind of just tone them down and work them into the composition a little bit so they don't look like they're just black blobs stuck on top of everything. But kind of work them in. Oh my gosh, this fly <laughs> keeps buzzing my face. It's driving me crazy. It's trying to land on me. I'm trying to land on my face, to be exact. So. <sighs> Did it come over here to the food bed? No. Gosh. Okay, so I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna get some burnt sienna, I think, and, and yellow. Yeah, maybe a little bit darker. I'm gonna add that to my centers of these poppies. They're kind of a, yeah, it looks good. Okay. Let that set. Um, these ones, I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow. my 
cadmium red light and then add a bunch of white so make a nice light light orangey color I'm going to use that to bump up the highlights on these orange petaled flowers I don't want them too close to this color though, so don't use the, don't, not too much of this color. Just a little touch of it. Okay, then I'm gonna get my magenta. And just mixing this orangey color into it. Getting some white. I'm gonna use that in my here. Get some of that light magenta and some of this color here, the light purpley color. There we go. I'm just making that a little bit bigger. And this has kind of wrinkles all in it, so I'm going to just Try to kind of mess it up a little bit. It's a little bit too smooth right now. I think I messed up and ate your nuggets. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, so... So you're going to run out and get me some more after the show? No, I'll have to eat mine instead now. <laughs> or you can go ahead and eat, eat my nuggets, and I'll keep painting. I'll finish it up for you. Finish the painting for yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit hungry. I had another BLT today that had a tomato that was bigger than my bread. <laughs> it was glorious. <laughs> Literally this thick <laughs> and this big around. <laughs> uh, we got some good tomatoes this year. All right. Uh, I'm going to use this color that I used in the center of these to do the centers of these puppies here. I'm just kind of going to tap in my little center dot for them. There we go. And I'm going to get in my angle brush here. Back, Go back to my angle brush and get some of my purple and a little bit of white. Purple, maybe a little bit of burnt umber. Yeah, so just slightly kind of white-ish and do my dots. I'm going to get some black too. So I have kind of black and this color on here. So I'm getting a little bit of dark and a little bit of light too. And I'm just going to tap around the center of my puppies there. This. Dark on one side and light on the other. So I get both, yeah, there we go. Just saves you from having to go back and do it again. Get a little bit of both colors on there all at once. If it looks too purple, you can add more brown or whatever. If you don't like a color, change it to black. It's your painting. You can do whatever you want with it. I won't know or judge you. 
No right or wrong way of doing it. Just whatever looks good to you. Getting a little bit of white here. Gonna do some white in this front petal. Some highlights. Going down this one is kind of opened up sideways, so we're not seeing the inside of it at all. Honestly, you could leave it out. You could leave out any of these petals that you're not happy with. It's up to you. You get some of the light red. Cadmium red light, or red medium, I mean, and white. And I'm going to do this petals highlights that I moved. with a dark cadmium red and put that back in. And it doesn't have a whole lot of value change. I took the photograph in midday so the sun was really bright and there wasn't a lot of there was either like really really dark shadow or really like washed out color so I'm just going to kind of manufacture some shadows in here where I think that they should be. Make a dark red with my purple magenta and cadmium red medium here. And just add some separations to these petals. <coughs> I should have done this before I did my centers, but that's okay. You can work around them. I'm just pulling from the centers out a little bit. That's much better. Okay, and I'm going to go back in with my highlight color again. Still not quite happy with that, so I'm going to get some white and some of this light blue, light ultramarine, and just kind of shape those out a little bit better. shape out of them. There we go. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna get some of the darker. Some of the some of the centers are darker and then lighter, so I'm gonna go ahead and make these ones darker. There, let's do it on these ones too. Darker center. Hopefully, we'll see. I do need to splatter still. But I want to 
want to add some really bright yellow to these, especially around the centers there. So we got a little bit of the dark. I'm just kind of adding little dots of. on some of the petals. <clears throat> Mark is sighing, so it's time to start wrapping it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Like, uh, you like the dog? <sighs> if he was in here, he'd be sighing right now, too. Okay. That looks good. And then I think I want to do something more with the greenery in here in this area. Because it, it kind of, now that we've got our flowers in, I want to put some of the greens on top of the flowers. Or, you know, kind of more prominent. So I'm going to mix some of that. It, I grabbed a little bit of that white. It had magenta in it, which I don't mind with the green. So I'm going to use that to just use as a highlight for some of these just a few places this will really um, draw attention so we want to put it sparingly but we don't have a lot of the lighter color down here in this bottom area so this kind of will help tie it all together Especially like with these darker areas, we can put some of this lighter right next to it. It'll make them really, really pop. <clears throat> like it. I'm gonna put a little bit of it on the the bulbs that are sticking out here too. The buds, I should say. Nice. All right, now let's splatter, splatter the heck out of it. So I'm going to get, I think I'm going to use this burnt umber and get get kind of my burnt sienna in there and burnt orange, whatever. Use kind of a dark brown. Add lots of water. Or, I'm going to add a little bit of glazing medium. What? Or are you going to add any insects? Oh, I forgot all about it. I forgot the insects. Yes, I did want to. Okay. I forgot. Well, let me go ahead and do this. I can do the insects around them. Whoops, what's way too thick. Way too thick. Got a little happy there. Yeah, I did. I should have tested it. Well, fortunately, that was all dry, so it'd come right off. Okay, let's try that again. Need more water. The thinner, the more, the thinner it is, the smaller your dots, the thicker your paint, the bigger the dots, but it, they won't splatter as well either. There we go. This gets everywhere, so just kind of protect anything you don't want splattered because it will get it gets on my computer every time I do this. <laughs> Getting on my brushes that are sitting off to the side here. I'm going to put them away. <laughs> my computer mouse, my every, everything that's sitting over <laughs> Everything setting over here is going to get splattered. <laughs> hide your children, hide your wives. <laughs> I need to get that Everything's meme. getting splattered around here. Get that meme in here. <laughs> what? Can you get that meme in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got paint all on my sticker too. I'm like, I don't know. I'm gonna get that off there. Poor thing. 
I just put you on there. You're already getting plant all over you. Okay. And let's do a light colored splatter too. I'm just gonna get some of this lighter color that I got here and splatter that too. I would like to do kind of two, especially when you've got a neutral background like that that can kind of show both, you know, both can show up on there. Etiquette, splatter etiquette 101. I, I like, I like lots of splatters. I don't know. I was going through, been scanning all my artwork and we have literally hundreds of artworks <laughs> over the years. We do, um, you know, about six to 10 a month. <laughs> so that adds up real quick and uh, been scanning them all. And I noticed that a lot of my artwork has splatters. <laughs> Not a bad thing, just just an observation. <clears throat> I do like the splatters. Hashtag splatter movement. Hashtag splatter movement. Yep. If you like, if you're in solidarity. <laughs> um, okay, so what was I going to do? Oh, bees. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, maybe I'll just do one over here. I don't have a lot of room left for them, so pick a spot up here. We'll do a little bee flying. Where's my picture? Where is it? There it is. Okay, so he kind of has a body. And then the little head is kind of a triangle shape like that. And then the legs hang down heavy. And then for the wings, I'm going to go ahead and just use this color here that I've got. Add some of the black to it, white, and do a couple wispy wings there, grab a little of the black and kind of throw some lines in it, it attaches right below, behind the head there, and then I'm going to get some yellow. behind the head and right behind the wings there a couple stripies and if you want another one you can do one right there too some of them have a third little stripey the ones we tend to have in our in our neighborhood have a smooth butt bottom they <laughs> <laughs> mark was teasing me during our bonus video because I was talking about smooth bottoms <laughs> <laughs> Not on the bees. I can't remember what we're talking about. <laughs> but round bottoms. On your pots. On my pots, yes. That's what it was, yeah. My urns had round bottoms. <sighs> Children. <laughs> I'm going to get the lighter color there and just give them a couple stripies on there. Look at cute. He's cute. I like it. Can't stand it. Thank you. Give them a couple highlights. Uh, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna maybe brighten up that, that yellow, give it a little bit more of a gold, They're kind of a golden yellow, get some of that Indian yellow hue with my yellow. Kind of have to add white to it to get it to, to show up too, so it's kind of tricky to get it bright enough. Oops, speaking of flies. Bees just buzz my head. I put the food over here. So can... Nope, I didn't get it. But he flew away. So there we go. Come right out here. All right, let's Bye. zoom away. I know he keeps buzzing my head. He keeps. Zoom out. Yeah, zoom out. Um. Yeah. I was going to put another leg in, but I don't know. I don't know. If, well, let's go ahead and put the second leg back there. So, there we go. Cute little bee flying around in our garden. This is very, very much what we saw. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very. Right now, it's all zinnias and sunflowers. And these are all pretty much done blooming. Zinnias, sunflowers, and hollyhocks. So we'll have lots of more, lots more fun paintings to do from our garden series 
And I'm going to be doing a tour tomorrow on Instagram, I think, um, if I can get up before it gets too too muggy out there. Get out there and do a little Instagram Live from the garden. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out on my Instagram page down in the description. Um, guessing it'll probably be, I don't know, maybe noon. We'll see. It might be too hot. But I do need to do another one. So it will be soon. Because I want to show all the fun blooming flowers right now. I've been doing a series of our garden um, on Instagram. So if you want to see those live stream, or the little very short live streams of just the tour of our garden. Our link to Instagram is down in the description. It's Thankful Art um, at, in Instagram if you want to look it up. But all right. I want that to be lighter. I keep messing with it. It needs to be brighter right there. There's no contrast. So I'm trying to get that to show up. Maybe just do a darker instead of lighter. A little bit of burnt sienna. There we go. All right. That's it. Here we go. There's our, ooh, get some super chats. We do. Nice. Thanks, guys. Oh, well, yeah, I have it recorded. So the first super chat. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't turn that Yeah, turn, thank you. <laughs> Okay, we're back here. So the first super chat is from Cindy and says, Beautiful garden, love it, and the painting. Oh, thank you. So thank you, Cindy. And then the second one is from Karen. And Karen says, Thank you for sharing your amazing talent, Angela, and Aww. thank you for all that you do. Oh, thank you. So Thank you, Karen. And then we had a couple questions. Okay. So the first Good. question was... Uh, a little bit of yellow to the centers of these. Go. Do open... Uh, do golden open paints make it easier for beginner paintings? And are they of good quality? Oh, yeah. Anything golden, they don't, they don't carry... Um, cheaper quality paints they're all going to be professional level paints from golden um they do the the i've never used the open the reason i don't use the open is because they take up to 24 hours to dry so something like this wouldn't be practical for me um but you can mix them into your regular acrylics so what i would try is maybe get like one or two colors or you can buy this um which i haven't tried yet but i um am planning on you can get an open medium, and what it does is it extends your regular paints. So you can just buy this, and then you don't have to buy new colors of the open colors. Um, add this to your gloss glazing medium, um, and just you can play with the ratios and see, you know, like I think a little bit of this goes a long way. And then add it to your paints and paint with them, and it'll give you just a little bit more drying time. It can make them. Um, it can make them feel a little bit um, sticky. It can change the quality of the of the uh, texture of the paint a little bit. So, you know, they might feel a little slick or a little different, you know. So just kind of know that going in that they may not be, they may not feel the same as you're used to. But, but yeah, I mean, it can, if you're having struggle trouble blending for sure, um, or if you're, you're working on larger canvases, it can really help. The next question says uh, they have uh, they got a glimpse of what they think is an apron with a Van Gogh almond blossoms on it. Oh, uh huh. If it is, they want one too. Ooh, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> I got it off of Amazon. So okay. um, I'll. I think the link might be in my. Um, 
I think it might already be in my Amazon shop. If you go to there, I usually, whenever I buy something like this, I'll put it in my shop. So the link down to my shop is down below in the okay. description. But if it's not, I'll check, I'll check after the show and make sure it's in there. But yeah, that's where I got it. I also made um, an apron with one of my designs on it, but I haven't sold them because it, I didn't love the texture of the apron, if I can pull it out. But it was kind of like, oh, there goes the whole basket. It was kind of plasticky. So this is one of my paintings on a on an apron. So I'm trying to find an apron company. If you own an apron company <laughs> and want to print up some aprons for me, call, give me a call because I have been looking <laughs> for somebody to partnership with and I have not been able to find an apron that I like that I want to put my art on. So <laughs> that's so, a whole side story. So, yeah. Sorry. In your Amazon store, you do have it under the studio setup. Oh, good. It's in the studio setup? So there's uh, some boxes and the curtain. Yeah, the for curtain. For sure. Mm -hmm. Is the apron in there? Uh, oh, well, maybe not under this list. It would be under art supplies, probably. Yeah, I check there. But anyways... So it's not well, well, it's not in there. I didn't see it okay. under our supplies. But. Okay. And then I have one more question. All right. Okay. They would like to know, can they use a Sharpie to sign their acrylic paintings? No, I would not. They are light fast. Or they're, they are, take it back, they are permanent, but they're not light fast. So they will fade. Um, so you'll end up with, you know, a painting without your name on it after a while. Um Fade. So I, I would recommend something like this. It's a PBO acrylic marker. It's acrylic paint in a marker form. And that makes it um, so that it just dries normal. And then you can gloss, glaze over it or um, varnish over it, I mean, and you have no problems. I was using these for a long time, these Pigma markers, but they don't saturate into the paint very well. They're great on paper. But they, um, sometimes when I would varnish my paintings, especially if it was a lighter color background, they could, they could smear. And I had other people saying they were doing that too. So I don't use those anymore. I've been switched to the PBO markers. Or another similar brand. They have lots of different brands that work very similar. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Thanks, guys, so much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe if you haven't already. Hope you come back. We're going to be doing another painting next uh, Tuesday. Oh, we're going to be painting a night sky with reflections in the water. So that'll be fun. I think it'll be a really basic, easy, beginner level project. So hope you guys join me for that. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Yep, I already said that. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll <laughs> see you next time. Bye.